You should totally be in IT. IT is the best job ever. The most in demand job in 2030? TikToker, 100%. Hey guys, welcome to Silicon Valley Girl. Today we're gonna talk about top 17 jobs of the future. We're gonna start with job number 17 and go all the way to job number one. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to talk about jobs that have no future. For this video, I'm gonna use the numbers provided by US Bureau of Labor Statistics and some additional data from Insider and other publications. So if you are thinking about being relevant in 10 years, so make sure you watch this video up to the very end to learn about the fastest growing occupations and to learn about the jobs that might not be too relevant by 2030. In this video you'll also get insights about how fast demand for some jobs is growing and you will also learn what kind of education you need to become one of those specialists that are in high demand. Let's get right into it. In order to create this video we took the jobs and rank them by how fast the demand for them is gonna grow in the next 10 years. I'm gonna start with three professions that are relatively new, so we don't have enough data for them to make any forecasts, but if you're interested in those niches, please pay attention to these professions. Number 17 is a lawyer who specializes on internet. Basically, what happens if I quote this? Or can I use this material in this video? Or somebody mentioned me in the article, can I sue them? This is what these professionals do. Number 16, managers of individual healthcare programs. Now let me explain a little here. Sometimes you go to a doctor and say, hi, I have a headache, and they would just prescribe you whatever they prescribe for headaches, and you go back home. The holistic approach is when a doctor actually takes your blood and finds out that, you know, there are some vitamins that you need to take and also gives you advice regarding your lifestyle. Maybe you should exercise more. Maybe you should change your diet. So this holistic approach is becoming more and more in demand. It allows us to become healthier humans and also allows us to save money. Number 15, ESG specialists. Now ESG is environmental, social and corporate governance. Basically, these people monitor what's the company's impact on the environment. How can it damage the environment? And they take actions. For example, in 2020, Google said that it's gonna hire 20,000 specialists like that in the next five years. Pricewaterhouse said it's gonna create 100,000 jobs for ESG specialists. Definitely something to look into. Data journalists. Data journalists make around $58,000 a year. Apart from having journalistic skills, you need to be able to work with Excel spreadsheets and apps that help you visualize big data. I also found a free course on Google that you can take, it's called Data Journalist. Data journalists work with big data and present it in a way that is easy to understand for regular people. So the example is they take a lot of data about how people invest and create graphs and tables that are easy to understand for everyone. These people work at banks, they work at media companies, they work with governments and Pricewaterhouse says that businesses that work with data journalists generate 10% more profit year over year. QA testing. So a QA tester is someone who looks at the website and pretends to be a user and starts clicking different buttons. And when some button doesn't work or something unpredictable happens, he creates a report, a bug report, that he sends over to the developer's team and they fix this bug. I've recently seen a lot of online courses that teach you this job and you can learn it in several months. It is predicted that demand for QA testers is gonna grow by 22% in 2030 compared to 2020. And in year 2020, there were 2 million vacancies from companies looking for QA testers. So I would say, if you're dreaming of IT, this would be the easiest first step into IT because it's easy to learn and it's also a quite high paying job. On average, people make $110,000 a year here in the US working as a QA tester. Of course, ideally, it's great to have some IT background, but you can have bachelors in something completely different like arts or economics and then take a course which lasts several months and become a QA tester. Quick ad right here. This video is brought to you by Render Forest. If you've ever watched my videos and thought, how does Marina create these animations? Like how do they work? Does she do that herself? The answer is no. There is actually a tool called Render Forest that I highly recommend. Render Forest is all in one branding platform. With a small investment, you will have access to valuable resources and tools 
that will help you boost your online presence. High quality videos with animations, logos, graphics, and more in one place. Even if you don't have design experience, you will be able to create professional looking content within minutes. Usually you need a lot of specific skills to create animation or motion titles, and most of the times you will just look for a professional who would charge you a lot of money. With Render Forest, you can create eye-catching animations for your website. With their marketing tools, you can not only create broadcast quality videos, but also iconic logos and professional websites. Because you watch this video, you get 20% off any package that you choose. The promo link with a discount code is included in the description below. Thank you so much, guys, and highly recommend a Render Forest. Market analytics. Now, people who do this job research the market. For example, if I'm researching the auto market, what kinds of cars are people buying? What's the percentage of people owning an electric vehicle versus a gas vehicle? How many people are leasing? What's the trend? Are people gonna lease more cars or maybe people are going to buy more cars? This is what market analytics do. You need professional education, bachelor's in economics or marketing or business. These specialists make around $69,000 a year and it's predicted that demand for them is gonna grow by 22% in the next 10 years. Number 11, cooks and chefs. The demand for this common job is expected to increase by 26% in 10 years. And we're not talking just about chefs. We're talking about the whole industry because there are many people in the kitchen. There are people, there are assistants to chefs, for example. And when we take the whole market, right now we have 2 million jobs. In the US, on average, if you're an assistant to a chef, you make around $28,000 a year. Cybersecurity specialist. Now a cybersecurity specialist analyzes a platform or a website and looks into potential leaks from which your website could be accessed, data could be stolen, systems could be ruined, etc. Of course, you need professional education. You need at least a bachelor's degree in computer science. The demand for these professionals is gonna grow by 33% by 2030. And they make around $102,000 a year. Number nine, home health and personal care aids. These people help those with disabilities or chronic diseases or the elderly who find it difficult to cope on their own. They work in nursing homes, hospices, or privately. The demand for them will increase by 34%. The median salary in the US is about $61,500. The demand for these professionals is gonna grow by 39% in the next 10 years because we're becoming healthier, we're doing more sports. And this profession is a fitness trainer. Right now, there are 300,000 job openings posted in the US in the fitness market. It is predicted that in 2030, we're gonna have 420,000 new jobs each year on this market. The average salary is $40,000 a year and you need a special training to become a fitness instructor. But very often this training lasts for several months, so no need to do bachelor's and master's in fitness education. Nurses. The demand for nurses is gonna grow by 45%. You need at least two years of training and, and a special exam to become a registered nurse. And on average, nurses make one $123,000 in the US. Now, this is interesting. Agents and business managers for celebrities. Let me explain how the industry works. If you think about the US, almost every actor, makeup artist, production company, stylist works with an agency. In fact, 70% of all actors are represented by top three agencies that are located in Los Angeles. WME, CAA, and UTA. These agencies employ thousands of agents. What does an agent do? They work with a certain actor or a talent and they match actors and talents with brand deals with different opportunities. And yes, a lot of bloggers, creators, TikTokers are working with agencies. And it's really exciting how this industry is also moving into this digital slash creator world. There are also standalone agents. The agents make money by taking commission and it ranges from 10 to 20%. And when I was talking to industry representatives, they also told me that the biggest money maker for an agency is when they put together a movie because they represent makeup artists who work uh, for that movie. They represent screenwriters, actors, production companies. And when they match everyone together, they create a movie and they take a percentage of whatever uh, the budget is. In order to become an agent or a business manager, you don't need specific education, but you need to have 
relationships and connections in this creative world. And the best path is to start working as an assistant in a bigger agency and then either grow as an agent there or start something on your own. Again, everything depends on your communication and negotiation skills. The average salary of an agent is around $116,000 a year. It is expected that demand for agents is gonna grow by 46% by 2030, probably because of the amount of creative people that is rising overall. And because there is so much money going into ads with creative people versus 10 years ago when almost all the ad revenue was on TV. Solar panel installer, basically a person who installs solar panels. It is expected that demand for these specialists is gonna grow by 52% by 2030 compared to 2020. The average salary is $47,000 a year. And in order to become a solar installer, you need special education in engineering. Ushers, lobby attendants, and ticket takers. Yes, exactly. This is job number four, growing by 62%. This is just crazy. This sounds a bit crazy to me as a person who thinks that a lot of jobs are going to be automated, but the reality is we have a growing number of elite hotels. We have a growing number of public events, conferences, and we need people to help us navigate on those events. There are more and more business offices, WeWorks, and we need receptionists there. We need real people. In order to become one of those people, you don't really need special education. You need to be friendly. You need to be willing to help. The average salary though is not too high. It's around $26,000 a year, but it's something that is definitely growing in demand according to US Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Okay, we're approaching top three jobs that are gonna see the most growth by 2030. Number three is wind turbine service technician. As stated by the American Wind Energy Association, there are more than 65,000 onshore wind turbines in the US. And every year this number increases. So we need technicians who oversee the operations, who can fix problems if they appear. This is why the demand for wind techs is gonna grow by 68% by 2030. Of course, you need education in the field of the electric power industry. In the US, there are, for example, specific technical colleges to help you with that. Also, employees are more likely to hire a technician who has other certificates. Basically, someone who completed additional courses like electrical safety, first aid, or climbing training. The median salary is $56,000 a year. Number two, motion designers and VR professionals. Now, let me explain what motion designers does. Sometimes you watch a video and it's all animation. You look at the metaverse and everything is like digital. You're in a digital room or somebody's wearing a digital dress. This is basically what those people do. They create either 3D objects, if it's a virtual designer, or animation, if it's a motion designer. And motion designers are in high demand among YouTubers. They're in high demand in production companies. Demand for these specialists is gonna grow by 70% by 2030. And this is easy to explain. We see how Meta is going into the VR space. We see more and more VRs applications. We see a lot of things going digital. The average salary is around $62,000 in the US right now. I have actually found several bachelor programs teaching you motion design and VR. But basically what you need to do is you need to be able to work with Photoshop and other tools and portfolio is one of the most important aspects of this job. So a lot of specialists just ended up taking professional courses and then doing a lot of practical tasks like being a contractor for a certain company just to build their portfolio. Da -da 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 -da. Demand for these specialists has already grown by 74% in the past four years. Companies need machine learning engineers and artificial intelligence specialists. Artificial intelligence is almost everywhere these days. You know, translation, accounting, finance, genetics, big data. People who know how to teach a machine to do things and how to make a machine learn by doing, make around $200,000 a year. Of course, you need special education in machine learning, ideally bachelors and masters. Okay, and as promised, at the end of this video, we're talking about top seven jobs that have no future, unfortunately. Number seven is a pharmacist. And according to US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the demand for these professionals is gonna fall by 15% by 2030. And yes, I could definitely imagine a robot giving me my prescription and a pharmacist actually managing several robots. Number six, 
florists. The demand is gonna fall by 20% by 2030. Number five, watch repairers. The demand is gonna fall by 25% in 10 years. Yeah, that's predictable. Like I normally use my phone to check my time or like a digital watch that is repaired by a company that sells it. Yeah, interesting. Call center operators is number four. I don't know guys if you've experienced this, but I experience almost every week when somebody calls me and it's not a real person, it's a pre-recorded voice that actually reacts to my prompts. The AI, artificial intelligence, is not yet there and I can actually tell it's not a real human, but I can definitely see how these jobs are gonna be replaced by robots. And it's predicted that demand for call center operators is gonna fall by 18%. Number three, engravers. The demand is gonna fall by 30%. 30%. Number two, parking assistant. There is actually a robot on the market already called Stan. It was created by a French company called Stanley Robotics and uh, a parks cars by itself. And number one is a transcriber. You already see how YouTube is so good with creating subtitles for these videos. And there's also a website called rev.com uh, where most of the things happen automatically. But basically computer technology is helping us convert audio into text and even translate it into another language. So the demand for a human transcriber is gonna fall by 36% by 2030. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I hope it was useful and entertaining for you and I hope that you share this video with anyone who's thinking about a new job or is thinking about changing careers in order to stay relevant in the next 10 years. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye bye.